Yeah. But anyways, so we're moving on to the lamb blitz on Kelp Dome. One thing I find fun about this map is that you can throw that small power, like the small clams over the uh, ledge from mid, mm -hmm. which I think is always one of those interesting ways of if you're forced back uh, after a push, you can always just throw that in to oh, hold the, the basket open. Oh, the emergency throw, yeah. yeah. You know, okay, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and say this. I'm a little bit conflicted about this map. Uh, reason being is because I always say, <laughs> as much as I hate the map and mode combination, I'm not a big fan of uh, Raymaker Kelp. I always say that Raymaker Kelp delivers like the most entertaining matches, and I'm kind of inclined to say the same thing about Kelp Dome with Clams, just because it you always get like these really, uh, it always comes into that one choke point where you're just going to be able to push in, and that point of cont uh, contestion is going to be like always delivers like these just massive. <laughs> just numbers of like these really, really thick, intense fights. So one thing to note here is that we see double Imperius coming out from Kachu Fugatsu. We also see Imperius coming out as well uh, from like in Rock. Mm -hmm. The double Imperius actually is a thing that we saw a lot in the from Kachu Fugatsu. They do tend to favor the double ink, uh, inkjet comps. We do see three inkjets coming now. We see uh, one going down on each team right now. Uh, Lick and Rock also goes down. That makes it, ooh, that's three down. Uh, but two power clams on the board for Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, Putz is the only one that has the power clam up at the moment. He does go That's down. That's two players on uh, Electric Boogaloo that actually do go down. So now it's up to Kacha Forget to try to see if they can actually regroup. Suatan going really deep into their base. And Kamolo also bring up the back line right there. Three members still go down. Kacha Forgets are looking really strong right now, trying to collect as many clams as they can for, the, uh, for their goal. We do see them having that area open, but do they have clams? They see 12, 11, 12. Let's see. There it goes, and they get a nice double pick there. Ooh, double pick, and the, uh, the barrier is broken. It seems like the, the game right now is currently in their favor. Bubble still stacking up right next to the goal, looking really good. All the uh, the clams are still trying to go in, so extending the timer as much as possible. We do see Kimomo uh, going back and trying to get more clams there, and then pushing forward and being able to hide in those bubbles and throw those clams in. Kimomo looking really good right now. Unfortunately, it does go down. Three members of Elect uh, sorry, Kachu Fugetsu do go down, so now it's up to Electric Boogaloo's chance to regroup and try to see if they're, what they can do with that. And uh, a push of 44 is pretty strong, but it's definitely not a game-ending uh, score. Yeah, no, it, it, there's definitely a lot to be had, especially with three minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock right now. Uh, Kachu gets to trying to plunge a few more clams with that one pick that they got. Already up to 20. Ooh. Nice direct. Nice direct That's by three down on a Electric Boogaloo again. That's a full wipe once more. Taraku goes in with the power clam right now, tickling the rest of the team to come in. The second power clam comes in. Momo actually does get the dunk. Down to 26 already. 26 looking good right now for Kachu Fugetsu. They do manage to get another pick. Three members of Electric Boogaloo go down. They do only have, they don't have that many clams, but they do see, you see those clams coming over uh, the side, but just not in time. My goodness. It seems like the uh, the picks that they have right now. So it seems like Electric Boogaloo are trying to sort of regroup a little bit on the right-hand side of One the One thing match. that's interesting here, nope, there we go, there's the pass. Oh. We saw that nine clams were coming out there, and we saw uh, that actually stopped Electric Boogaloo from being able to uh, uh, push in their own clam over on the uh, left. I have no idea where that jump came from. Uh, uh, they actually managed to break the barrier, but they do go down. Not a big deal right now, they actually do, uh, sorry, Kacha Fugetsu actually does manage to get the points down to 17. Uh, so they're looking really, really strong at the moment. I'm not sure if... Uh, we see an electric boogaloo cool. jump going oh. in. Oh, okay. So it doesn't mean they just jump right close to the base. Two members do go down. Uh, they still Including have that power. Including the carrier. Plan. Yeah. So the power plan right now is still sitting there. Lycan Rock trying to see what he can do. See if Lycan Rock can get there in time. And yeah. no. No, unfortunately. Just the power barely. Plan does go down. So now, right now, Kaja forgets is just going to be playing a little bit of a defensive game trying to see what kind of picks that they can get. We see pretty even on a clan count. Yeah, there's pretty even on the clan count right now. Side trying to pull back a little bit, trying to see if you can get the counter splat. Asai also managing to use that toxic mist to basically trap their opponent there so that their uh, teammate can actually take them down. However, they do go down as well. Yeah. Well, the three situation right now, Electric Boogaloo are looking okay, I'm trying to see if they can take control of mid before they can actually collect more clams and then go in for the offensive push. We do see this nice uh, left path going down here. However, they do seem to have been spotted out. Unfortunately, Missiles only manages to get one player, and even then, it doesn't manage to do much. And that player, it was just kind of watching that player come through the reticule, getting closer and closer and closer, and it was the, can I get this off before I die? Can I get this off and defend? Oh, Zada was trying to make a little bit of a mad dash towards the uh, back of the base, having eight clams in tow, but unfortunately, it does go down. Wolf, Wolf does also. go down as well. Two members do go down on Electric Boogaloo. 
but Takacha forgets he can have three specials up with the ready, including the Splashdown and the two Ink Jets. It's up to them to see what they can do with it. We do see Zada kind of cornered there with uh, four members of uh, Kacha forgets who all uh, on top of each other. We do see uh, Putz lurking over on the left. Let's see if he gets uh, called out. Looks like he's managing to hide there a little bit. Oh, he's playing a little bit of a sneaky game right there, trying to try uh, just sort of gauge where the rest of the team is right now. One problem with being sneaky right now is it's allowing that Kacha forgets who is able to uh, push in, and that's game. Yeah, beautiful game played by Kacha Fugetsu. It seems like they were in the offensive the entire time. Very good special management on uh, their team. So now it's just going to be up to Electric Boogaloo's chance to sort of see what they can do to regroup and take this very, very aggressive team of comp down. We see just 15 kills coming out uh, from both of those Empyreas on top there, uh, just showing how strong that weapon can be with the curling bomb, show how strong that these players are with the Inkjet, and just their ability to move overall. Okay, so we just received, or we received word that we're actually going to be going offline just for a couple of seconds, but we will be back on the stream. Don't go anywhere. Yep. Thank you so much, guys. We'll be back soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are just going to go ahead and continue on with the game that's going on right now. The next match, of course, will be on... Wait, do we have... Yeah, we have the list right here. <laughs> Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, Splat Zones Camp Triggerfish. Splat Zones Camp Triggerfish. All right, cool. I suspect we're going to see an Imperius. <laughs> yeah, I do think that we might actually end up seeing like another double Imperius comp coming in from Kachi Fugetsu. Unfortunately, well, we don't yet to see what exactly is going to happen. Um, they do tend to favor the double inkjet, and Osai went really, really strong on the uh, blaster of the last game, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if we actually did see Triple the... Triple inkjet? Uh, no, not I wouldn't say triple inkjet. We would probably see the custom uh, blaster, maybe, possibly. Well, custom blaster will give you the inkjet as well. So if we've got that, then two imperies. Yeah. But uh, I think I think uh, it'll be interesting if we see the uh, forge coming out again, because the bubbles are really uh, such a strong weapon in splat zones, just to be able to neutralize and to be able to move people uh, out and away. Um, I also think that. Uh, 
that uh, Camp Triggerfish is in such an interesting map because of just how those two zones are separated because it has that gap of water in the middle that you can use the inkjet, of course, to like get across it, but it's pretty hard to actually paint across it from one side. So you have to be using those left and right paths to actually be able to cap the zone. For sure. Um, this map does tend to favor a lot of long-range weapons. Uh, usually you wouldn't see anything like a Dapples on this just because of the lack of, the lack of range. It's just not going to be able to cut it. Uh, long range especially, like if you have one member go down on one side, you want to be able to sort of like pick up the slack and try to see if you can actually uh, paint up on the other side. Because, of course, for spot zones on, um, on Camp Triggerfish, it's, it's not just one zone, it's two zones. Oh, and we actually see no M. Perry as well. I take it back. Wow, okay, all right. <laughs> but there's those Glugas. We don't even see as much of an inkjet. However, Sibutan actually busting up the uh, custom Glugas, so that would be really, really interesting. I can only surmise that they would probably use the wall uh, to sort of try to see if they can lock down one side right now. That's one of the things that's so nice about the, green blast, the Rep Blaster Pro is that it can reach across there. Mm. Um, Especially to be able to move that jet sculpture from its uh, spot hiding on top. Hut's looking really strong right now, actually going super offensive right now with that Clash Blaster. Hut's actually does uh, work really good. He's been looking really, really good on the Clash Blaster the entire turn. We do see uh, Kamomo uh, coming out there and having that uh, Neo Splash Romantic with the Bomb Rush. One of the things I actually love playing that weapon. Ooh, but uh, KP goes three. Three down. Yeah, there's a three down situation right now for Kachi for Getsu, so it's going to be up to them to sort of see if they can regroup. In the meantime, Electric Blue is going to use the opportunity to try to see if they can get as many points as possible. Suwutan does go down despite the wall going up. Tarak is going to try to see, uh, reposition a little bit. Manages to get one pick thanks to that wall right now, and he's going to try to see if they can uh, assist the other. See control lost for just a second, mm -hmm. continuing there, but we do see uh, the forge going down, which is a pretty bad uh, spot to be in as they were the one that was. Uh, Providing a jump point. The UBC's three situation going on right now for Kacha Forget. So they managed to grab one pick that they needed. So they are, they're going to go ahead and grab the control of the zones. They use the two specials in, uh, in coordination with each other. Beautiful plays by their team. Like Rock basically runs out of there to try and preserve that stinger and being able to use that as a problem. Gets a pick mm. on Momo. Momo does go down, so two members of Kato Pogetsu goes down. After Boogaloo, hopefully the rest of the team is going to be able to go push a little bit more on the offense. They do have the lead, so they're not really worried too much. It's not much of a lead, however. One thing to note here that is also interesting that we just saw is that those bubbles with Stingray, it's really hard to see if you're actually hitting a person or if you're hitting those bubbles. Um, because we did see that Stingray martyr going off, but we also could see those bubbles coming through. We see the missiles coming off from Puts. That's looking really strong right now, just managing to like just secure the right side. Wolf coming up right behind him. So three members, or two members rather, just trying to stay up on the street, avoiding the rain as much as possible before they actually go for an offensive push. And we do see uh, the interesting thing here is having that uh, Flash Blaster and the uh, umbrella over in that corner just makes it very, very hard to get out of their spawn. However, they are managed, uh, able to cap zone, and then it's a full wipe on the side full of the Full wipe. Team. Coming off for Kachi Fugetsu over here. They do manage the beautiful uh, special coordination. That's one thing that they're like showing just absolute presence in. Oh, and we see a water death to the blue guys. Oh. <laughs> they just wanted to go, they wanted to take a little extra dip, you know, and smash and splash, Swimming, right? Swimming, yeah. <laughs> Going to the water park. All right, three on three uh, situation right now going on for both teams. One member does actually go down for Gotcha for Getsu, creating another uh, two, two down. three down. Yeah. However, uh, saying that, it's of course then ends up in two v three for a second, and now we've got a four v three. Um, one thing to know is that that bucket was just doing a very excellent job of standing on that ridge and just being able to rain down on uh, their opponent. Components. It seems like Electric Blue is doing a fantastic job right now, just holding down the zone on their own end. Zada trying to see if they can go over a 2v1 it situation. Nice trade. Yeah, my nice trade. However, the rest of the team does manage to get the extra splat that they need. 3v2 situation. Electric Blue is looking really strong right now. And they also just need to get control. Because right now it's just a thing of uh, KF might not be getting points right now, but the zones are still not uh, back in uh, Electric Blue's favor. Zada right now looking for doing a little bit of a mad dash right here, trying to actually pick up both zones. Toxamus does come out, out trying me. to force uh, Zana right out of the zone right there. And now, uh, even though Kaji forgets is just down one player, they're, they're trying to see if they can actually get both zones with these. Ooh, and that is a three down situation on Kaji Fugetsu again. 
Okay, so now when the next, uh, next player is up, Cap does go down for Electric Boogaloo, uh, cementing their uh, dominant status right now at the moment. Uh, they're just going to have to be a little bit more careful where right? uh, Kacha Forgets is trying to reposition just a little bit just to try to see if they can actually get the... Uh... See that baller basically Ooh. chasing down like it <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Wall does come out. One splat for Suwaton. Trying to see if they can actually get an extra player, but, but they do unfortunately not the able to. Zada looking really good right there. Try sloshing and uh, picking up the zone in the process. I am very excited to see this. Uh, Zada's uh, kill count on this one. Yeah, yeah Zada's looking be. really, really powerful right now with that dry slosher. So right we now. see uh, ooh, a, that nice bomb kill there. That's one of the things that's so nice about a splat bomb is you can throw it over there and just sometimes you'll just end up with a kill. We do see the timer already counting down. Five it looks left. like it's gonna, ooh, maybe not. Right now, Kachi Fugetsu is in a bit of a mad dash. Three members do go down. Taraku's the only one up, and, and that's gonna game. be the game. Well played by both teams. Now yes. it's t evenly tying it up to a 1-1 situation. I also just really enjoyed that like the comps aren't the most meta things that you'd see. Like the Rapid Blaster Pro definitely is pretty up there. Um, <laughs> we do see the Bucket coming out with 10 kills, Lycanroc coming out with 19 kills on top. Wow, looking absolutely pr uh, dominant right there. I think Electric Bulu played that comp exactly what they needed to do. Um, they weren't overly aggressive, but it seems like whenever they did have the zones, they were just absolutely like killing it. And they did a really uh, good job on defense as well. They, they seem to be working together as a team and also knowing kind of the tricks of the map. Like, I think they showed a very good spatial awareness um, in terms of knowing, like, when to move in, where uh, Kachu Fugetsu was going to go, and being able to predict those movements and anticipate and react appropriately. Absolutely. So now with the game tied up, I do think that the teams are very evenly matched right now. Um, but of course, that remains to be seen with the next maps that are going to be coming up. Of course, round or game three and round two is going to be Tower Control on Humpback Pump Track. What do you think you're going to see on this? I love Tower Control on Humpback. It's a really fun match. <laughs> That's good because I'm not a big fan of it really? myself. No. <laughs> I, I don't know. I really like. I like. I will. Per I will call Humpback Pump Track hump Humpback Jump Track. Oh, really? But Why? I still love the map. I just find it funny. Oh. But, like, I just, <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, the map itself is really quite enjoyable. Uh, I think with tower control, uh, like, I think you need to be able to have that kind of higher, like, a uh, long-range weapon. Um, but I also just, I, I think we will see the return of the inkjet coming out from Kachu Fugetsu just because they're, like... I was joking about it earlier, but it was the thing where it was like, man, it's like they kind of made it at this point. Like they were just doing such a commanding job with it during the first match, during the past masters that we've seen with them. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know what? That's a good point. Um, I do feel like that ever since they did switch up that comp away from the two, the, the double M parries that they had from the first game, it's just like it didn't seem like they had that much ex like ranged pressure. Yeah. So. And it I will be up to them to sort of see if I can actually bring that back, or at least bring back the double ink, uh, inkjet in some way, because yeah. they're just really strong with it. And I'm, I think we might actually see the custom jet coming out again, just because of Stingray and Tower Control. Like it's just, it's such a GG, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> if anything, I do think that Electric Boogaloo would probably use that a little bit more. Yes, so right definitely. now, yes, we do have the double M Perry comp coming in from Kachi Fugetsu, followed up with the bubbles and the blaster. So this is going to be very tried and true. Uh, see a booyah coming out. That's yeah. the most important. Oh, the booyah! Yeah, you got to be able to bring that in the battle. Immediately right off the bat, uh, right off the bat, um, Putz's blaster does go down, so it's going to be a 43 situation. Right now, Kachi Fugetsu trying to see if they can actually get a little bit more mid pressure. However, uh, one member on the left does go uh, down, Ooh, trying members. to grab uh, the tower, and so it's a 3v2 situation in their favor. We do see that uh, pressure already coming out from that inkjet. Just being able to uh, get that nice kill on the uh, chest culture. Momo looking absolutely amazing right now with the Amperis, trying to be, uh, pick off people with the inkjet. And uh, oh, look at those double curling bomb right there. Like, it's really, really tough to actually jump down into the court it's and always, challenge that tower. With it's the always the thing of, like, am I am I about to die here? Is this where, do I hear that sad sound of the curling bomb? Yeah. <laughs> 2v2 situation right now going up. I saw it looking really strong, grabbing the tower, challenging Wolf. Does the splashdown, however, does not manage to pick off Wolf. Uh, Narrowly However, avoiding death right there from that random splat bomb. We do However, see three down again on the side of Electric Bulu. Yeah. 4v2 situation coming in strong right now. Kachipagets trying to struggle with trying to grab that tower again. 
however, all the team is just positioned right there. Beautiful play. That was just very, Oof. very decisive game. And we just we saw that power of the inkjet just because it was able to get around those corners. It was able to get around the humps of the map. Um, and at the same point, they just did a very good job of knowing who was on tower. You could see the coordination of knowing I'm on tower now and then I'm moving off and who was pushing forward and who was like where they were positioning themselves overall. So we are going into our game four. Yeah, we're going into our game four. Game four is going to be a Rainmaker on Piranha Pit, um, or as we used to call it back in spot one, football. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be confused with the actual Clan Blitz football, but uh, for those of you who don't know, Rainmaker on Clan, sorry, Rainmaker on Piranha Pit right now, like it's this long stretch of land, right? So it just becomes this game of like whether you're able to push through uh, with that just. It's it's like this long stretch of land, and like the very middle is just like this no man's land of like if anybody can cross, right? So it becomes a game of whether people or certain players are able to go down, and uh, then they can go for the push, right? I mean, of course, the same can be said for any sort of Raymaker match, but um, this one in particular is really, in my opinion, I always like to call it football. <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. I actually never played Splat 1, but I'd, in seeing, in watching old matches and seeing how people were playing it, and then also just seeing it obviously now in Splat 2, like, I think it's just one of those match, one of those maps that's really fun and kind of hard to do, like, a proper defense. You can see these kind of long plays coming out, but, like, until it's a knockout, it's not really always a guarantee. Yeah. Like, of course, if you get onto that top plat area around the actual platform, like, that gets a lot harder to get to, especially because of all of the different ramps. Oh, yeah. Those the, those conveyor belts that are constantly just, like, it, it becomes down. such a difficult push. An upward, it's a very uphill push, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, the thing is there is, it's not just the, like, the fact that you're being pushed down that's the problem. Uh, if you take that, like, closer ramp, it's the fact that as that ramp's moving, the area in front of you is not painted anymore. Because yeah. it's the conveyor belt. So we do see double Imperius coming out again. We see a custom jet on each side. Uh, we see a very, very fast hero shot coming out on the side of Electric Blue. Yeah, I do think that the only difference that they... Oh, two members Already immediately right off of that go down by Kajin Pagetsu. Uh, we, right now, they do manage to grab the Rainmaker. And they <laughs> pick off the third player right now. So it's just one more. Like wrong, just trying to see what kind of defense they can get. Uh, get. Goes down in the process. Now Putz is trying to scramble from the backside, trying to see if they can pick off Rainmaker. And he does so in the process. To. However, at this point, we already see Kasha get to still continuing their forward push. There's that ink jet. Yep, there's one of the ink jets. 2v2 situation right now. None of the specials are up. Hero shot does go down. Thus, right now, Taraku's trying to grab the Rainmaker, tries to make a little bit more of an offensive push. And we see a push already to 39. However, we do see uh, Kasha basically now having to get back into position. So the ball right now is in the court for Electric Rigolo. Trying to see if they can actually regroup and paint up a little bit more of the map before they do push. Putz grabbing the Rainmaker, trying to actually see if he can actually uh, pick off anyone in the process. Wolf with his umbrella, uh, trying to snipe one player down. 3v1 situation right now. That's a full wipe again. Ooh. We see uh, Kachu Bigetsu being able to push forward if they're able to pop the Rainmaker. Yeah. So right now, um, Kajin Kugetsu do have the Rainmaker. It's a 2v2 situation. Uh, the Rainmaker does go down. Asai trying to uh, defend herself as much as possible. Picks off Zada in the process. Like Rock trying to ward off uh, Asai as much as possible. Asai Puts is right able now. to stay alive even in a uh, situation with 3v1. Oh, and then they go down immediately to the Rainmaker shot. Yeah, 3v3 situation. Uh, Electric Boogaloo do, does have the Stingray up in tow. So it's just a matter of just uh, using it at the right time. However, um, there's the other stingray. The other stingray comes out in the process, so they do have an answer to that. For the two situation, Komodo does pop the rainmaker, grabs it, and now it's up to them to see what kind of push they can make. And we see the uh, reverse stingray coming out, and again, there it goes, rainmaker down. It's one of those things where it's just kind of a quick way of killing the rainmaker if you get. Yeah. Uh, if they can't outmaneuver you. Yeah, it seems like it, I do feel that Electric Boogaloo was trying to save that right, uh, that Stingray just for the right moment, and it seems like that was it. However, now uh, Contra Pugets is just punching in right through the front line right there. Asai grabs Ooh, two nice beautiful shot. kills in the process. 
Right now, Electric Boogaloo is going to play a little bit more defensive game, trying to see if they can actually pop the Rainmaker and ward off the uh, rest of the members do you, off. Do you see that nice little uh, lurking there? Let's see if they are able to play off. And they are. Suwutan sh sharking in the process, grabbing one player and uh, stopping Don't a little roll bit. Don't off! Yeah. <laughs> and Suwutan actually does manage to get the 1v1 in the enemy base right now. Three members do go down on Electric Boogaloo. Kachu Fugetsu going to pop that Rainmaker and try to see if they can go for another attempt at the push. So right now it just seems like uh, Kachu Fugetsu is just consistently pushing. They're able to get around and to have that movement. Um, they are being chased down by Wolf now. Ooh, Taraka does go down in uh, one of the same spots that she went down before. Full white coming on again for Kachu Fugetsu there. And it looks like that might... No, and it's not! <laughs> A nice pick down by Putz. Not quite. Kamomo does manage to bring it up to 9, so they're looking really good right now. Asai staying alive in the enemy base finally goes down in the process. Now Wolf is going to grab the Rainmaker and try to see if they can actually reclaim a little bit more of the map because entirely it's all yellow at the moment. So it's, yellow. Yeah. And it's just so important on a map that this large to have that kind of map control. Otherwise you just aren't able to reduce the Rainmaker going down to a Stingray and Kamomo's health. Yeah. So Puts right now, just trying to <laughs> roll around the Rainmaker as much as possible. Does grab the Rainmaker, now it's just that to him to do a little bit of solo push with the help of that Stingray. But it goes down in the process just by not having really any other players in the process right now. Nice direct, nice trade. Nice trade uh, by both players. Now just Taraku just trying inching a little bit closer towards the Rainmaker. We do see Electric Gulu going free down once more. Mm -hmm. Puts being the last one up alive, fighting and doing that with Kona over in the left. So it's going to be a little bit of an up uh, uphill battle for Putz to actually take down someone. Tries to inch closer with the Dapple roll, unfortunately it does go down. Wolf goes down in the process right now. I saw he's taking a little bit of an odd route right here with the Rainmaker. Well, one thing that's interesting is you never really see this route, but it is viable-ish. Yeah, I can see it working considering there's 30 seconds left on the clock right now. Asai is actually... This just keeps it in oh. the hardest spot for uh, Electric Boogaloo <laughs> to be able to move forward at all. Putz just rolls in really randomly and actually manages to pick off Asai and the Rainmaker, so... Um, Taraki See, right now is just... Kachu Fugetsu doesn't even need to pop it at this point. They can just sit there, except uh, Electric Boo is able to pop it. They're just kind of lurking, waiting. Absolutely. So it seems like this is going to be quite possibly the final push. Putz does have the Rainmaker trying to see if the rest of the teammates can actually go in front trying to shield him up as much as possible. 4 v 4 situation, one member does go down for Electric Boogaloo. It's going to look really uh, rough. The Splash Down does come in. Uh, come in. Two players. The stingray. The stingray. Double Stingray coming up from inkjet. each side. And the Inkjet does take down Putz with the Rainmaker. 3-1 for, for Kachu Fugetsu. And that was, that, one of the things that's interesting there is Kachu Fugetsu just was consistently pushing. They just never let down on that pressure. And they also knew when to uh, push. And like that you said, like that play at the very end, it's just being able to get it out of the way, get it as inconvenient as possible uh, to allow for no counter push.